Hey everyone and what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a battery. We're going to run this battery on all the tests that we do to ultimately determine the performance that we get out of the battery. And the battery that we're going to be looking at here today is a 4 amp hour lithium polymer battery from Turnigy. It's the graphene version here, at least that's how I pronounce it, and it's a 45C discharge rate, we're using 4S packs. I also have 6S packs to test as well. We'll be able to see if they compare identically to these after we run the test on those packs. So look forward to seeing that in a later video. Now these packs, I have to say, I do have an expectation, a certain expectation for them because the last ones that I had performed quite well. However, we did test graphene batteries and specifically the Panther, the green case battery packs and those did not perform anywhere near what I was expecting for them. We're going to take these batteries and perform two tests on them. We're first going to throw it on the charger and get the internal resistance of the pack. Then we're going to throw this onto our RC Patreon calc sheet to ultimately determine what kind of C rating we expect this to have from the internal resistance that we end up measuring on our charger. Then the next test that we're going to do is we're going to throw this on a low test. It's going to deplete the battery until the end of the pack so we can get every last milliamp hour out of it and see exactly what kind of performance that we get out of this. We're going to then compare it against another 4,000 milliamp battery pack just to see how it stacks up against another similar pack. Let's get right into it and start by charging up the battery pack. We want to charge it up so that we see exactly what kind of internal resistance we get when the charger takes its first reading. That first reading on this charger comes at the one minute mark which is the perfect ideal spot in order to grab this internal resistance. The internal resistance is going to be measured when we're charging the pack at 1.5 C. For a 4 amp hour battery pack we're going to be charging it at 4 multiplied by 1.5. This is how we got the the six amps to charge this pack at. As you see the internal resistances for both battery packs, we're going to take these values and we're going to average them and then we're going to throw that value up on our RC calc sheet, our Patreon calc sheet, so that we can ultimately determine what the theoretical maximum discharge rate would end up being. And of course the C rating. Let's do that. Here's the RC calc sheet that we're going to be using here today. At the very bottom here, you can see in the corner, we got the real LiPo RC calculator. We're going to use that to ultimately determine what the C rating is of our battery pack here today. Let's jump on that tab and then I can explain a couple things that we have to do here. So if you want a copy of this, come April, the first week of April, I'm going to then release this specific version. This is 1.025. If you're a tier one member of the Patreon community, you will have access to this sheet every single month. And if you are a tier member too, you will have access to the battery sheet that we release every single month with new battery packs that are being tested and you'll have access to all of that data. The capacity of the pack that we're testing here today is 4,000 milliamp hour. We can place that value in that cell. And then the average cell internal resistance, if you were calculating alongside the video there, would have been 4.7. That's taking all eight cells from the two battery packs and making an average out of all of those. We get 4.7. This tells us the battery is actually an 18.2 C rated battery pack and the maximum continuous current that we should expect is 73 amps from our battery. This ultimately tells us that when we run our low test here in a very short moment that we should see results that probably are going to suggest that the battery pack cannot handle 100 amps and it's going to fail prematurely. We will not be able to fully deplete our battery here today. Let's jump into our next test. We're going to throw this onto a load cell and we're going to measure the amount of power that this thing puts out as it's being loaded at about 105 amps. We got some data. We got some data on the screen as well as a graph in front of us and we do have this fail greater than 60 degrees Celsius. Now I do have to talk about this because in this test what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to measure the battery as it's running and I'm measuring the battery but every single spot and location on the battery is not measuring the exact same values. I'm getting different values read at different points in the lithium polymer battery pack. So I'm using a heat gun and I constantly have to move it up and down the battery to find where the hot spot tends 
to be. And in some cases, one location becomes hotter than the other, and then sometimes it actually shifts. So what happened in this test is I was around the 57 degree mark, more than likely already, but I didn't know that because I was measuring the battery in a different spot. So essentially what has happened is we actually ran probably several seconds longer than we should have, and this battery did exceed 60 degrees Celsius, probably causing me permanent damage on the battery pack that I bought for me to own and use. That's how it goes sometimes. So let's take a look at the test and the data that we got. We see right away that the total milliamp hour comparing our graphene 45C up against a light period 40C 4000. So it's very similar in specs. And the total milliamp hour that we got out of the pack was 3445 versus the light period at 3420. Now keep in mind, we did run a little bit longer. So we should expect to see any metric that's related to the capacity it might be a little bit overinflated. I have not adjusted it for where I think this test should have have been cut off. So milliamp hour to 3.50. This is now not impacted by that same thing because it's on the first part of the test going from 100% capacity down to the capacity that gives us 3.50. And that's just removing 237 milliamp hour from the pack and we're already sitting at 3.50 volts. That's quite different than our light period at 1230 milliamp hours down to 12 or 3.50 volts. The time to get there was eight seconds, eight and a half, versus almost 43 seconds for the light period. Again, much more superior on the light period for our 3.50 volt marks. The 3.6 volt marks here, you can see 76.6 is the milliamp hour and the light period destroyed it at 270. And the time to 3.6 volt is 2.85 versus 9.45. The voltage at the 10 second mark, quite considerably different, even though they're 40C versus 45C graphene versus light period packs here, 3.52 and 3.58 volts. This is actually where you really see performance data. When it comes to pure power, the light period battery is giving you better power at an instantaneous moment of time and more than likely at any point in time within the entire duration or the entire capacity of this pack. Now the energy per cell, the watt minutes, this is now looking at capacity. Our graphene was able to deliver deliver more capacity. So we see a small amount of energy per cell that we're getting and that happens to be 708 watt minutes versus 699. Not a significant difference, but there is a difference and more than likely only because I let this pack run a little bit longer than it, pr it probably should have. And then the average cell wattage that we see, this does not relate to capacity. This is purely based off of performance, 340 watts versus 360 watts. I would say that this is a significant difference between those two values giving us a performance bump by just selecting the light period. When you look at the graph, we see a pretty healthy graph showing us that it does sustain the same amount of voltage for a consistent amount of time. The voltage here that we have is in blue and you can see that it's following almost a straight enough line somewhere between the three point three mark and 3.5 mark. That's what we're seeing there. There we have the results. They are definitely not what I was expecting if you would have asked me this a year ago. However, after I saw the Panther batteries and how they performed, I more or so expected that these would not be able to perform as well as my old batteries, which are now five years old, and I'm actually just discontinuing their use. The one thing this battery pack has is it's definitely an inexpensive battery, especially if you catch it on sale then you have to pick these things up because they are a great deal if you're just looking for a battery that you can have some fun with. If you want good performance from your radio controlled vehicle, these are not going to be the batteries that are going to get you that excellent performance. You're going to want to look elsewhere to get high performance, high quality lithium polymer battery packs. And the last point that I have is I was exceptionally happy with how close each one of the cells were to one another. I don't always see this with lithium and polymer battery packs, but being able to see that all the cells were very close to one another at the voltage that I received the battery packs at, as well as their internal resistance, this is definitely a good sign and something that we should put on the advantage side of these specific batteries. This is definitely part of an indication that we can see some reliability from these cells, these battery packs long term. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this video and me testing out all these different kinds of batteries. I'm going to upload 
this spec here to the next sheet that gets released for our RC battery sheet that we release every month. That's going to be found on Patreon. If you're looking for a copy, you can download it there. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.